The Good Doctor is quickly becoming one of my favorite medical dramas, and you continually request it. So I figured, let's just go ahead and watch the second episode of the first season. does not look like a comfortable sleeping position. <laughs> I wish I was this happy when I woke up early in the morning. What is he measuring? Where to? San Jose St. Bonaventure Hospital. I'm a surgical resident. Today's my first full day. I'm at floor. <laughs> I like this show. I don't know, it gets me happy. It just puts me in a good mood. This is Mitchell Brand. I reviewed his chart. He's 55 years old from Chicago, divorced with two children. You did a radical prostatectomy on him yesterday. This is actually very accurate. Uh, in a post-op unit, you will get visited by the attending physician, the head physician, who's usually the main surgeon, and they will have their residents following them along. Here in this case, the patient had a radical prostatectomy, which is a removal of the entire prostate gland. I have a whole video on the prostate and how how things can go wrong with it. So if you want to check that out on my channel. The thing about the radical prostatectomy, why it's a difficult surgery is because there's a lot of nerves in the region of the prostate, amongst other structures that are very anatomically important, including your urinary system, your semen duct. Going in to perform that surgery, you want to make sure that anatomically, you're very careful not to damage the surrounding structures. But as we know, things can go wrong and things happen. You're late. Five minutes, we've all been. On your first day, no less. It is your responsibility to be here. If you were not, you have failed in your responsibility, which makes it your fault. Okay, how can it be my fault? I did nothing wrong, the bus. Yeah, this is gonna work out great. The board clearly made the right choice in hiring you. Thank you. I think the attending is being mean, but on the other hand, I think he's right. As a doctor, it's very important to be on time. There should be no excuses because ideally you should be there early. Being a good resident, it's ideal to get places early so that you can review the charts beforehand, get all the information so that when you are rounding with your attending, you know all the information. It's definitely abutting the aorta and the left kidney. Renal angial myelipoma? Do you see an extensive blood supply? No. God, I wish I could do this. She has a sarcoma, a malignant tumor. Malignant? That means it's killing me, right? Yes. I get that it may have features of a malignant sarcoma, but to know instantly uh, without a proper biopsy, it, it could be several things. So that's it? You just accept my answer at face value? Why? You're very arrogant. <laughs> arrogant people don't think they need to lie. How long will this be? Seven minutes. <laughs> Without any complications, it takes seven minutes to do a discharge examination properly. Dr. Dunsmere has already cleared him to go, and we need the bed. Okay. Protocol requires that the surgical department also clears him. Why is a patient that has an ear infection admitted into the hospital? And question number two, why is a patient that has an ear infection being treated by a member of the surgical team? What are you doing down here? I'm waiting for her to fart. She had abdominal surgery. But I'm using the word fart in front of the patient to be more casual. But you're the president of the hospital, so I'll say flatulence to you. Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> Why are you doing that? She had her deviated septum repaired. Before we can release her, we have to be sure she isn't suffering from post-operative ileus. Post-operative ileus is when the muscles of the intestines don't move correctly. Uh, and it basically, it's like a frozen intestine, meaning that the, the gut is not moving the food and its remnants and the stool further down and allowing it to pass. This can happen sometimes. Uh, one of the first things you wait is for the patient to pass gas. And then in some cases, if you had something more complicated like a uh, an abdominal surgery, you wait for them to have a stool before sending them home. I think that was it. You don't have to smell it. I don't think so. I'll wait a little longer. This is important. No, it's not. The procedure is called a laparotomy. Um, your heart sounds good. I don't know what she was listening to her heart for. That was definitely just an add-on for the show. But when we listen to the heart, uh, we listen in multiple areas. When you're listening to one area, you're listening to one part of the heart. Then you move the stethoscope around and you're getting the other part of the heart, which gives you more information. And then you move it to the other side of the chest where you're listening to uh, separate arteries. So you can hear what the aorta is doing. You can hear what the pulmonary valve is doing. My husband died in a car accident a couple of years ago. Mark is our only child. I can't die right before his wedding. I can't. 
You're not gonna die. Making promises like that, I've said it before, it's not wise. We have only so much control over certain things, especially they don't know the grade of this tumor, they don't know the spread of the tumor. A little girl has a tummy ache because mommy and daddy won't stop fighting. This isn't a medical issue, send them home. Could be intestinal malrotation, which could quickly become fatal. And every patient in this hospital could have malaria. Well, that doesn't mean we're gonna go around testing for every condition we think they could have. Ordering random tests just to make sure that a patient doesn't have that condition is certainly not smart, and I agree with the senior attending here. What you learn from experience is when you go on a hunt uh, and you start ordering a bunch of tests, certain tests will come up positive, mostly because a lot of those tests uh, have the the high possibility of coming back as false positives, which then encourages you to order more tests, which has several effects. The patient gets anxiety. Second, some tests carry risks. For example, if you start ordering CAT scans on every patient, you're exposing the patient to unnecessary radiation. On top of that, you may find on a CAT scan some kind of nodule, some kind of node, which will need further testing, sometimes a biopsy. Biopsies carry risks. You see where I'm going with this? From now on, you don't run any tests you don't have to run. How do I know if a test is needed until after I run it? She'll tell you. Nurses actually have a lot of experience in knowing what tests to run, which tests are excessive, which tests are very important. In fact, when uh, residents in my hospital ran uh, rapid responses, the nurses from the ICU were so experienced, they already knew what medications to pull up at what dosages, even more so than some of the young residents. I'm Dr. Claire Brown. I'm first assist today and I'll be leading the timeout. Patient's name? Stephanie Willis. Scheduled surgery? Excision of an indeterminate retroperitoneal tube. Oh, now it's indeterminate. We don't anticipate any complications with the surgery. Thank you, Dr. Brown. That timeout actually happens. It's basically we confirm all of the information. Generally, we do it while the patient's awake so they can confirm all this information. And then we do it one more time before we start, including this may surprise you, discussing the site of the operation. Because it has happened, unfortunately, horribly, that we've operated on the wrong side of a patient's body. There's been a lot of things put in place, procedures put in place that prevent us from making that horrible mistake, with the timeout being one of the most important ones. It might be infected. It's not. There is some discoloration. He's 82 years old. Everything is discolored. <laughs> Blood pressure 120 over 70. Heart rate 60. She's holding steady. I have opened the fascia. You know what you guys should do? You should screenshot this little scene where she says, I opened the fascia and send it to Gabby Hanna because she tweeted me not so long ago saying that she can't believe that after we operate on organs and we put them back, are they just like floating around in our bodies? And I told her that everything is interconnected with fascia and she had no idea what fascia looks like. So send her this picture on her Twitter. She's gonna love it. I thought you'd wanna see it. It looks like puke. <laughs> no, 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 it's not the regular color. Your puke has a regular color? Yeah. It is a bit of an unusual color. We could order some. I'm sending you home. <laughs> Are you sure? This is so good. Part of medicine, and a big part of medicine, and something that I learned and teach my students is that a big part of what we do is reassure because people worry, and there's a lot of anxiety that comes with people's bodies. Uh, fluids start coming out of random places, uh, fluids change color, we bleed, uh, body aches our heads hurt, our vision changes, a cough occurs, upset stomach. As soon as you go on the internet and you look at any one of these websites, you can fall down into a wormhole thinking that your headache is caused by a tumor like this. Claire, tell me you got something. I've got nothing. This tumor is way bigger than it looked on the scans. Hence why we don't diagnose people I, just by looking at I scans. I can't even see her aorta. That's a problem. The tumor is encasing her aorta, meaning it's fully surrounding it and engulfing the aorta, which serves to be the main blood supply to the bottom of the body. Dr. Melendez sent you a biopsy. When will the results be ready? When I get to it. It's very important. They're all very important. Let me see the other test orders. I'll tell you which ones are most important and you can do them in that order. I'll be honest and fair. In complex surgeries like this, we not only have the pathology lab on standby, but you could also even have a pathologist in the room with a microscope ready to make the call immediately, especially when a patient is under uh, sedation. You don't want to extend the patient's time under sedation just because the pathologist is busy with other cases. There is one possibility. 
If we remove the left kidney, we might be able to get a good enough view to successfully remove the mass. Take out a healthy kidney to get a better view. That's insane. The tricky part with this is that if they're not successful, she could die. If they're somewhat successful, she could be incredibly disabled and have horrible disability from the surgery. And her last six weeks to live with this horrible tumor are gonna be awful, as opposed to if they just suture her up now and then she can enjoy her last few weeks of life. Even if the surgery is a major success, does that mean that they were able to get the entire tumor out and now she's completely cured? It could be spread all across the peritoneum, which is the inside of the abdominal cavity. To me, this sounds too risky and too much of a, like a cowboy move, but then again, I'm not a surgeon nor a surgical oncologist. That's why I would ask someone who's more of a subspecialist, which I don't think any of these people are. A am I healthy? Probably. You're a doctor, you're, you're supposed to know. No, we're not. Nobody knows anything for sure. Anybody could drop dead of a heart attack at any time. Who is this guy? Am I, am I gonna have a heart attack? First of all, don't do this in an open space like this, because if he starts yelling, it's not gonna look good for anybody. I have these conversations all the time. Patients come in and demand to know that they're healthy and there's nothing wrong with them. You can't promise that. What I can do is answer a specific question they have about their health. Doctor, my ear hurts. Why do you think that is? And I could say, well, I looked in your ear and I found that you have an ear infection. Let's treat it and see what the outcome is. You give them reassurance that it's likely to pass, but you tell them if the symptoms continue, if the symptoms are to worsen, if new symptoms appear, please return so we can do a further evaluation. That's it. The small bowel is twisted around the superior mesenteric artery. Martine needs surgery immediately. We need to confirm with Dr. Melendez. No, nope. Dr. Melendez is in surgery. Part of Martine's bowel is dying and killing her with it. No, you cannot make these calls on your own. Dr. Melendez was very clear. He was very clear. It's past midnight, which means it's tomorrow, which means you're no longer my boss. Is this the OR scheduler? Yes, this is Dr. Murphy. Prepare an OR for surgery. As feel good as this is, an intern cannot just book an OR, can't schedule their own surgery. No one would ever allow this to happen. Actually, this could be grounds for expulsion from a surgical program. Why do all surgeons look so frail in these shows? Him, McDreamy. I mean, I get you're operating all the time, but come on. A little deadlift and bench press never hurt nobody. Thank you. I like the minimalist look for an apartment. Oh, he got a mattress, look at that upgrade. When I say this show has good writing, I'm not talking about the actual speech and the words that the characters say, that's good. But when I say great writing, it means they think ahead for each situation to make it not only lighthearted, comical, fun, and interesting, but they show a way to highlight a person who has autism in such a unique light that it's very positive for people who uh, are born or develop this condition. But this is probably one one of my favorite shows right now as far as medical dramas go. I'm certainly a fan. The reason I watched episode two is because I wanted to learn more about the first season before jumping into the second season. Now, if there are some good episodes within the first season you want me to watch, please let me know down below in the comments. Hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you get all my videos. And check out my other content if you enjoy my medical drama reviews. You'll love it or your money back. As always, stay happy and healthy.